Hey everyone, welcome to another Power Monkey podcast. On today's episode, Chad and I interview Danny Spiegel. Danny has become one of the top CrossFit Games competitors in just the last few years, having a meteoric rise to that CrossFit Games level competition in a very, very short period of time. We go through a little bit of what it's like training for the CrossFit Games right now, being 2020, a very odd year, training schedules are all up in the air, but the CrossFit Games are happening in some form or fashion, and they are happening in just a few weeks. So we talk about what her training has been going through, how this different is, uh, this year is different than others, but also go into something that's happened recently that has put her name on the map a little bit more for the general population. She's participated in the inaugural Titan Games, which was held on NBC and hosted by The Rock, and she came out victorious just a couple of weeks ago. We talk about that experience, what it was like to compete in that setting, how CrossFit allowed her to have a step up and a leg up on the rest of the competition, what it was like hanging out with The Rock, and a little bit more of what's going on within her daily schedule right now. She's an incredible athlete, uh, really forthcoming with what's going on in her daily life. Amazing that she comes from a gymnastics background and how that kind of assisted in how she's able to attack workouts and attack new movements for her right now. I think you guys are going to enjoy this episode. She's a great person. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hey, Danny. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to jump on with me and chat. How you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me. It's, it's nice to see you guys. I feel like it's been a, it's been a year and it has. I know, so, I know. Funny it's, enough. <laughs> yeah, you, you were at uh, Power Monkey Camp with us last fall. And so it's yeah. been just about a year ago since we were hanging out together in Tennessee. But obviously, this last year has been a little bit crazy. But uh, where are you right now? Where are you coming in from? Orlando, Florida, home. So just been hanging out here for a while. <laughs> so um, I think I would be remiss by not bringing up the most current and uh, amazing thing that has happened in your life right off the bat, um, the winning of the Titan Games. And first off, congratulations on winning. It's Thank freaking you. amazing. Thank you. But um, I'd like you to tell me because I don't know too much about it other than what you and Matt Chan and the rock and the others have posted about it uh but could you tell our listeners and tell me and chat a little bit about what it was all about and and uh kind of what got you on the show yeah so their whole thing is about taking you know people just like out of all sorts of situations in life like i met people from all sorts of different backgrounds nurses firefighters and they they bring us all together in this competition to show that no matter what you do on a day to day that we can all compete on the same stage. So it was really cool. There were some CrossFit athletes that I was with there as well, like Matt Chan and Margo Alvarez. So it was really cool to get onto a different kind of competition stage with people that I've competed on the CrossFit side. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, you know, it was really all just about bringing a lot of people together and, you know, like any other kind of fitness event that I partake in, I just took away from it is people with a lot of different backgrounds coming together and just having fun swinging around and some stuff, lifting some <laughs> weights. So it just, it felt kind of like a CrossFit competition to me, you know, honestly. <laughs> right. And I mean, with you winning on the female side and Matt winning on the male side, I think it's pretty obvious you take people from any walk of life and the CrossFitter is going to win in that kind of setting. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was a little, you know, kind of like a validation thing mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, we always talk about and we tell people over and over again that, you know, if you want to be prepared for anything, and you don't want to be just really, really good at one thing, but have a really versatile, you know, tool belt in the terms of fitness, the CrossFit is kind of the way to go. Uh, so it was nice to kind of be like, okay, well, mm -hmm. these two CrossFitters did it, especially someone like I, I hate, I hate talking about age, but sometimes you just have to. Mm -hmm. And Matt being in his forties and just yeah. demolishing everybody was a pretty cool thing to watch. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so man, awesome. it was amazing. I, and I actually just got done watching your your final uh, race there, I guess I would call it, um, w when you won there and gave me chills all over the place. I'm I'm excited, you know, just coming fresh off of that. But that's one of the things I was going to ask is you feel that you guys being from a CrossFit background had an advantage. It sounds like obviously, uh, obviously you do. And kind of on top of that, you know, was the the actual competition going through – you know, not just the finals, but leading up to the finals, would you say that it's easy compared to a CrossFit competition? Did you, because, I mean, you look very comfortable. I mean, you were working like, but you just kind of, you know, comfortably stepped through those obstacles, made your way past them. I don't really feel like you were breathing hard. So I'm curious to see what you think the level of, you know, difficulty compared to 
uh, your general CrossFit workout, say something like Murph or anything like that, uh, and then into, say, the CrossFit Games or regionals? Um, in the humblest way possible, I would say my day-to-day training is harder than right. what I experienced on the Titan Games. Uh, so it has nothing on like a competition is, you know, that's days back to back where you're doing four or five events a day. Mm. Like they're super hard. And these were just like quick. I felt like just a big kid on a playground, mm. really, you know, just swinging around, like doing some, some things that I feel like I was doing when I was five year old, just like on the monkey bars, <laughs> just like hanging <laughs> around. Um, obviously there was a, a sense of, you had to have pretty good stamina to be able to keep going at the rate in which we were. But I, um, I felt real, I did, I felt pretty comfortable and I have to just attribute that to my training. So I was prepared for what, uh, it was thrown at me. The hardest thing was, uh, the actually one of the first events that I did where I was just pushing against an opponent. They didn't really show it on the episode, but I was up there like pushing against this girl for 26 minutes. Oh so it was God. like 26 minutes of like a sled push almost oh, and like that. Wow. And my, you know, my stamina at the end of it was really what got me, got me through that. Cause she was strong. Mm. Uh, so my background definitely prevailed there. Uh, I think she was like a power lifter coming from a power mm. lifting background. So she was strong, but <laughs> my CrossFit stamina definitely helped me. But uh, back to what you were saying is, yeah, I would just say that my training, you know, day to day is I, I struggle more in that <laughs> than I did mm. at Titan games. Yeah. Did you have a favorite event? Anything that was like, I could do this all day kind of a thing? Yeah, the Mount Olympus run is I just, you know, that obstacle course, uh, flipping that box, jumping over things. Uh, when I was really little, I would watch like the Laura Croft films and like her just like going through these tombs. <laughs> and, like I, I was like, I'm just Laura Croft. <laughs> so yeah, I'm over nice. here just, you know, swinging around and like, you know, twisting this thing and having a bridge drop. So I just, yeah, I was just having a grand old time. <laughs> Love it. And how, uh, how's the rock? Is he, uh, was he getting really into it? Um, he seems like somebody that we'd be able to maybe coax into a CrossFit workout every now and then. How is he uh, on set? Yeah, I, uh, I tried so hard <laughs> to get into a CrossFit <laughs> workout. Um, and you know, he's, he's got like probably one of the biggest hearts that I've ever met. He genuinely just cares about people. And he was filming, you know, a film like for like, like a movie while all this was going on and still found time like during his breaks to come check on us and make sure we were okay. And he, yeah, he's got a, he's got a good heart. Um, He's super humble, super nice. And he's one of those people where I don't know if you guys follow him on Instagram, but the things that he says and his attitude is like actually who he is as a person. Mm-hmm. It's not just a front for what he does on social media. So that was nice. You know, someone who's like that level is just a genuine human, which is nice. <laughs> Love hearing that. You don't get that too often yeah. with somebody that you, massively famous mm-hmm. that is yeah. that good of a person, uh, you know, in reality as well. So props to the rock for being a good dude. Um, yeah, shout out. <laughs> so, Right now, with everything going on and how crazy time is, um, I think you might be in a fortunate situation being in, you know, at home and being able to access and be able to train. But uh, what does your training look like right now on a regular basis? Um, has it been severely affected by all going on or you feel like you're still kind of able to train pretty regularly? Uh, I have been incredibly blessed with this whole situation is I've had access to my gym from day one of all of this. Uh, I have a key to our gym and, you know, while we shut down for you know the quarantine purposes, I was still allowed to go in and do my training because I was the only one in there. Um, so I still had like access to a gym the entire time. So my training really hasn't been affected in that sense. It's been more of uh, in March I had stem cells put into my shoulder. So it was essentially like going through a surgery and then I messed up my ankle pretty bad. So it's, Hmm. it's been just a battle with myself (laughs) recently, not so much, uh, the COVID situation, but my heart bleeds for so many people that I've been in contact with especially, you know, places like California where gyms haven't been open this entire time Mm -hmm. and people are going crazy. And I can't, I can't even wrap my head around it because 
unfortunately, and you know, no more, it's just unfortunately, Florida has just pretended like this isn't a thing that's been happening and they've just been like, oh, whatever. Um, and so it's weird coming from Florida and going to another place and seeing how serious it's being taken. It's almost like we just, like for like Florida just didn't even ever get to that point. And so not to say that's like a good thing at all because our, our COVID numbers are absurd. Um, but I, again, my training, my life hasn't been affected all that much. So I just, I hear, you know, everybody else and I just feel, I just feel for them and how their lives have been affected and not just athletes, but businesses, companies, you know, I, I can't imagine that what people are going through right now and it's so hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. T- tough times. And it is interesting to see, you know, hear people from Florida talk and to hear what's going on there versus what's going on here in Texas versus what's going on up there where you are, uh, Dave. So yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully, and you know, I don't, I don't know that everything will ever get back completely to normal, but it does seem like as a whole, we're kind of heading that way and uh, definitely look forward to, to being there. Now talking about getting back to normal, or as close to it as we can get. Um, what are your thoughts on the CrossFit games and the upcoming, um, I guess, Open is coming up now in February, just been announced here recently? Yeah. Um, for the games, you know, this year that they're doing the online portion, I think it's, you know, it's just a, you got to tip the hat to CrossFit that they really, they make things happen mm-hmm. regardless of the situations. They're letting us compete, making sure that we have a, platform to be able to have the games you know the things that we work for all year um it's a little weird we're still don't have all the information uh i mm-hmm. know that the athletes like we actually have a call tomorrow to talk about like equipment lists and you know things like that just we were asked like what our proximity was to like a 400 meter track so it's kind of like one of those things where it's like <laughs> it's up in the air we have no idea what's gonna what's gonna happen what's going on but it's nice that something is going to happen and then, you know, the second portion where people are going out to California. So it's great that that's going on. I, you know, the open being in February, it doesn't really, you know, February, October, it doesn't really, it's happening. Right. So it's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> A little bit more time to, you know, get ready for it, that type of deal. But other than that, yeah, so. I'm, so can you I'm can you cool explain <laughs> a little bit uh, just for the listeners on how right now the latest is for the setup for the game? So there's going to be an event online uh, mid September, and then in October they're going to have an event in California where they take people qualification wise out to an actual location compete. Yeah, so September 18th is when the online portion will start. So it's you know essentially like a mini intense open. I think we we still again haven't gotten details whether it's going to be like two three days, and uh, we don't know how many events are per days. But I'm guessing we're going to have a lot of work to do within the two to three days. And then from that online portion, the top five females and top five males will go out to California in October. Don't know those dates yet, but they said it should be something like four five weeks right after the mm-hmm. end of the online portion. So interesting. Well, it seems like. If anybody can pull it off, uh, it's CrossFit with the resources that they have. So hopefully it'll turn into something really, really great. And maybe something that they can incorporate into future events as well. Um, yeah. Injuries. You were talking about uh, your shoulder and um, your ankle and stuff like that. What happened to your shoulder recently? Uh, so I had a labrum tear and that happened actually last open. And I just like kind of was really hesitant on like, seeing what was wrong with it. So I got it checked out. Finally, actually, uh, in February, while I was down uh, filming for the Titan Games in Atlanta, I went and got it uh, it checked out, got an MRI, saw that I had a labrum tear. So then in March, I went and got stem cells uh, put into my shoulder. So it's been about five and a half months since then. And I'm finally getting back. I actually did my first spring muscle up today. So yay. yay. Um, So it's it's been healing it's getting back it's just been a frustrating process just like any injury uh and then i really like really badly sprained my ankle um not doing anything cool i was actually just doing double unders and i stepped on my own foot and (laughs) it just like (laughs) completely like went to the floor 
Uh, so then I'm just dealing with that. And so again, with the frustrations of injury, it's just one of those things you just day by day, you have to realize that you got to take it, you know, at the injury's pace. Um, so it's just been like one thing after another with me this year and with, uh, you know, 2020. <laughs> yeah. I think that's everybody's case with 2020. It's just this year is like, yeah, we're all stepping on each other. <laughs> just, that's, yeah. That's I, 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 I've heard so many people talking about, you know, just like freak things that have gone on. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm, like, I keep seeing this meme on Instagram where it's like, let's just throw up the Christmas tree and call it a year. <laughs> right. And I'm, yeah, I'm right. definitely at yeah, that I'm point. That like, let's sure. just come on. <laughs> yeah. That would be nice. I think we're all going to take a, uh, you know, last relieving deep breath, uh, whenever, uh, what midnight on December 31st, for sure. <laughs> you can immediately feel, feel better. Now, Danny, you know, trying to go into the CrossFit games, I mean, as a competitor, certainly you're, you'd like to win, you know, what on top of that, what is your ultimate goal? What is your ultimate desire in all this? Is it to, you know, stay in CrossFit for as long as you can and can keep competing and, uh, keep working towards uh, winning. Um, you know, what do you hope to do in the future? I think, you know, I look at someone like Sam Briggs, who has been in this for so long and, you know, competing against her, you know, at a competition like Dubai, and she just still comes out and just wins and is so like badass. I think, you know, you look to someone like that and you're like, yeah, I would love to compete until forever. I just want to keep going until my body literally just says no. Uh, so on one side, yeah, I'll keep competing until I just can't anymore. On another side, like I, I have like my fitness and nutrition business that I'm steadily kind of growing now, but my focus is competing, but eventually it'll shift mm -hmm. and I'll put more time and energy into that when competing isn't so like top priority. Um, but right now it's like my, my life is pretty, my life is pretty great. I live, uh, you know, day to day, just like doing what I love, training, mm -hmm. motivating, inspiring, helping people with their own fitness and like nutrition journeys. And, you know, I don't want to rock the boat right now. Like every, like everything is just like day by day, perfect in my eyes. So I, um, I have like very general uh, ideas of what I want for the future, but for right now, I'm super mm -hmm. happy with like what's going on day to day. So I'm just kind of like living in the moment right now. Well, that, that's the best way to do it. You know, when it took me, I think way too long and we all still struggle with that, but it took me way too long to, to realize that, to, you know, live in the moment, live day by day. And yeah, you've got your goals out here, but let's focus on one step at a time and enjoy the process. Right. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And then, it, uh, it's still something I'm trying to learn, uh, as well. Like sure. I, you know, I said that right now I'm like living in the day to day, but it is like, sometimes I have to remind myself just mm -hmm. like, you know, take a breath, enjoy the day. Like everything's going to come, you know, full circle, things will be okay. Don't worry too much about the future, especially right now with it being kind of like up in the air in a lot yep. of different ways. So, um, definitely have had to remind myself that a lot recently. Danny, what's your background as an athlete? Uh, obviously, I think, you know, your Olympic lifts are at such a high level. And I think it's probably something that you, uh, a competition comes up and you're like, okay, great. You know, got a lift in here. But your gymnastics is amazing. I mean, your, your flexibility and your, you look like you were a former gymnast. Did you do gymnastics growing up uh, and okay. kind of? You did? Okay. All yeah. right. So it's yeah. not just the natural. You're not like Matt mm -hmm. Frazier. He just picks up things like on the fly, you actually have a gymnastics background. Yeah, I actually, uh, my background, you know, you'd think that I just somehow knew in the future I was going to do CrossFit because I primed myself perfectly to be able to just go into the CrossFit space. I did gymnastics until I was 15. Um, I had a pretty bad back injury. And at that age, you know, you get an injury like that. And not only like the physical uh, side of things, but like the mental side kind of took me out of competing anymore. And then I did anything from like track to volleyball to like springboard diving. I just, you know, stayed active. Uh, and then my freshman year of college, I was on scholarship for rowing. Uh, oh, wow. And yeah, and then I did mm. track and volleyball again throughout college. And then my senior year, I found CrossFit. So my background pretty much like I just did it all to kind of get me to uh, CrossFit. I had never done, you know, any Olympic, Olympic lifting or, you know, any, any kind of real 
like strength stuff. Like I did some kind of strength training in college, like for my other sports, but the first time I ever like did a clean and jerk or a snatch was when I had started CrossFit, but I had to attribute, you know, my background in gymnastics for like body awareness for picking up like Olympic lifts so uh, easily. And then I got to, you know, tip my hat to mom and dad. I do have pretty awesome <laughs> genetics <laughs> for CrossFit. So <laughs> it's just been an all around <laughs> blessing. <laughs> That is quite a combination between gymnastics and rowing wow. and track. It's like, yeah, you are completely built for this sport. That's awesome. And yeah. then obviously you can leave the weightlifting until much later on, but the foundation <laughs> yeah. of gymnastics Come is on now. Critical. That's where we're going to go. <laughs> the yeah, only thing you, I was yeah. missing is like soccer, like running, like running mm. for really long <laughs> periods of time because my body still does not want to like run more than 200 meters. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm tired. I think Chad, well, Chad is right on board with you on that one too. That sounds like a weightlifter <laughs> right there. And actually my limit is about 50 meters. So you're, you're doing <laughs> You're doing and and you know that you judged me in the in the crossfit workout there at, at power monkey camp so you did you great in that workout oh man <laughs> i, don't I was, know what you're talking I was about. suffering the whole i looked way worse like 10 times worse than you ever did in the titan games finale <laughs> like 30 seconds in i was hurting the whole time that workout was brutal though that was so yeah. that, was, that, that workout was, was awful that was the first open workout from last fall so it was the yeah you know, whatever that Bar facing burpees, ground overhead. And yeah, <laughs> ground overhead, ground and overhead, bar yeah. facing burpees, and yeah. I don't remember the numbers, but uh, yeah, I, I forgot ten immediately. And, ten and twelve, right, or ten and eight, something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Just around that, really, like you can yeah. hold on, but it's yeah. so bad. <laughs> so ugh, ugh. Yeah, I don't. I don't really want to remember that, but uh, you mentioned you got good genetics. I mean, and it's kind of hard not to see that. I mean, you, you know, you've you've got such a uh, an incredible build and more, I, I mean, yeah, gymnast a little bit, but with those legs, I mean, that, that looks like an Olymp, those look like Olympic lifting legs right there, but what, what, yep. you, what did your parents <laughs> do? Did they, did they play sports at a high level as well? My, so my mom, like she did cheerleading. Um, my dad was the one who he, you know, he wrestled, he did dance actually, he did football he like cycled, he ran. I mean, he did all of this stuff. He even like competed in like some rock climbing stuff for a while. Mm. Um, and I did uh, some rock climbing when I was little with him. Uh, so he was someone who just, you know, did it all and just would, in his eyes, he even does it with uh, things nowadays as he gets to a level where he's really comfortable with something. He's like, okay, well, you know, like I, I mastered that and, mm. you know, as much right. as I wanted to like on to the next thing. Um, and that's how it was just like growing up with him, he would just, you know, sit down and do something and become really comfortable with it and be like, okay, next <laughs> challenge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just got, got that ability. So. Does he do any CrossFit? It sounds like he'd be incredible at it. No, no, no. Yeah. He, he's like living the, like my mom and uh, him go hiking with the, you know, the dogs and everything now. He's just like living the quiet life. Um, he jokes around. He goes, I, uh, I stretched today. Like I touched my toes and I was like, yeah, dad. <laughs> so he's, he's more of like just the, he's in his like retired athletic life. He's just mm. having fun with my mom now. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. Living a good life. So you, you seem to have really good relationships with all the other athletes too, specifically like someone who's a camp favorite of ours, Alex Smith. Do you guys, uh, yeah. during all of this going on, do you guys still keep in touch pretty often? I know you guys can't see each other at, as often, but um, how is your interaction with other athletes going on right now? Um, and are you able to kind of keep track on training? Do you have any virtual training sessions or anything like that where you guys are able to continue to, to feel like you're in the same place? Um, I keep in touch with everybody. I think it's like, a. I think Alec and I talk pretty much every day and it's, it's more weird if we don't talk, uh, than if we do, um, especially if it's not even something like through Instagram, like if I don't get a meme or something from him, you know, in a day I'll like check in and be like, Hey, <laughs> like, didn't hear from you. <laughs> um, but we keep in touch like pretty regularly. Uh, I actually did uh, a couple of weeks ago, like I just, I got on a plane and went to Virginia and saw him. Oh, did you really? Uh, so I, yeah, I spent like oh, a nice. week with him. I just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but that's kind of how a lot of people are right now. You know, some people have gone to like travel, but we do, you know, as athletes, um, you know, the friendships that you guys like see, like they're real. We'll, we'll talk every single day, just, um, 
like even uh like the old team like I still keep in contact with like Cody Mooney and everything like he's over like in Maine right now he just got back from like London so he's been traveling all over the place still uh for work and stuff so uh everyone seems to be doing well I know that Chandler just went and like traveled and got a lot of good training in with so many people hmm. uh he just like got done training with Katrin and before that he was like training with Amanda uh so athletes will uh they'll do <laughs> they'll do what they need to do to be able to go and like train with people and see people mm. so yeah because I'm, I'm curious like, how you are as an athlete because you know looking at the crew that's down in in Cookville with with Tia training with Matt and having that workout buddy to kind of push you a little bit um, do you find that to be helpful to actually have someone who you can have as a rabbit there, uh, to kind of chase after somebody that's going to push you that extra mile, or do you find training by yourself to be the way that you can actually maximize your training? How do you prefer to kind of, what type of setting is optimal for you in terms of that, uh, that situation? Oh yeah. Uh, I hate training by myself. It's the worst. No one wants to like go to the gym by themselves and do like rowing intervals. It just, <laughs> you, you gotta be a different kind of psycho for that. Um, I'm not, I'm not that I, I need training partners. I'm lucky enough to have my, my coach who's also my boyfriend, Alex, like he does all, he does everything with me. He programs, my stuff for me but he also does like all the training for me I'll have to go and do a couple things on my own but you know he gets up and will train with me in the morning before he starts like his what I call the you know real world job like he mm -hmm. works he's like a software architect so he like gets in the morning does training with me goes to work and then he takes like his lunch break to be able to work out with me and then goes back to work and then he ends work and then we train again or we'll go wow. swimming or something like that so he um he is full on like committed to making sure that he's a good training partner. Uh, and then I do like, I'll travel around to go uh, with other athletes. Cause you, you train with one person enough and you kind of like learn their weaknesses and it's, it's really a detriment to me because I'll know what he struggles with. So if there's a workout that I know he's going to get stuck in at one point, I'll almost pace my workout off of mm -hmm. that. And then yeah. just, you get into a, a bad cycle. So it's good to go and train with other people who are better at, you know, one thing they can push you here or they can push you here uh and then a different athlete might push you in like a whole different realm so I am someone who totally believes that it is if you can bounce around and train with different people absolutely do it because you'll get pushed in different areas and you won't get into like a cycle where maybe one thing you never get pushed on and then you uh you show up at a competition and it uh it shows. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm definitely someone who who says that you should go and train with as many people as you can. Yeah. And we had you uh, out with us at last camp, like we mentioned. That's an environment where, you know, you have a variety of people to train with. Experts in certain areas. You have your your partner in crime, Alex Smith, training with you, or some other athletes. Yeah. How was that environment uh, for you? How, how did you enjoy uh, coming out to Power Monkey Camp and? an environment like that where you can kind of pick and choose who you want to train with for the day? That was probably, you know, not probably. It was one of my favorite experiences that I've done, like, in this space. Not only because, yes, you have so many different, you know, athletes that I personally could, you know, sit down and train with, but there were, there were times when there would be workouts and just some of the members, like the campers, would just come and, mm -hmm. like, jump in. And CrossFit is one of those things where as long as you've just got – someone next to you it doesn't matter the pace that they're going sometimes it's just nice to have someone next to you and I was never alone with any of my stuff mm -hmm. like that entire time and the crowd that's there like they're there to get better and they're there for the experience and you know they just didn't miss out on anything and having that excitement you know some people like I, I've been in it since 2016, so not that long. And I can't even imagine, you know, people that have been doing this for 10 plus years. It's nice to be around like that, that excitement that you had, like your first six months of doing it. You know, mm -hmm. you come and those campers have that. They're just, they, it brings like that, you know, that feeling. And I think that was one of the things that it, it kickstarted almost, you know, a really good open for me, you know, mm -hmm. starting my open there. Um, just the excitement that everybody brought it, like brought back, like, you know, why I love it so much, like why I love this space, this sport, um, the sports that are within CrossFit, Olympic lifting, gymnastics, you know, all sorts of stuff. So 
I, uh, it was wonderful. And I, I want to, I'm itching <laughs> to come back. I oh come yeah. Back. We got to get you back out for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alex coming back again for, cause we're going to be hosting in a few weeks. We have our camp in, in October and Austin be coming out. So hopefully we can get you back up so, out sometime soon. I just remember uh, one of the workouts, you and Alec or somebody, there might've been a bigger group, but I was doing a video uh, at camp and I was doing like something gymnastics related as I always do. And I was doing some sequence and you guys were like way off in the background of the video and <laughs> just lifting, like you could barely see you guys. And I posted it on Instagram and the only comments I got were of your legs. Like you were on the other side of the gym and no one was even watching what I was doing. There was like, look at that girl's legs. Look at that girl. Like every comment that I had was about your legs from the other side of the gym. I was like, Oh my God. I, was like, this is so I, believable. I think I remember that video and you were doing something wicked hard. <laughs> like something that like no one else in the world could do it. Nobody cares. Like, Nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> Got to make sure that Danny's not in the background the next yeah. time you try to put out some I know, content. Yeah. Oh, or I just gosh. get more views, but I was like, all right, there well, I mean, go. at least I know where, <laughs> yeah, uh, right, yeah. but yeah, you guys were doing some snatch workout and I was like, okay, well, Make sure that I we remember keep that Danny that camp. workout yeah. also was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I remember sitting down for a really long time after that one too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, my bad, Dave. <laughs> yeah, see that? No, well, we definitely got to get you back out to camp. We'd love to have you yeah. uh, with us. Uh, I I'm always looking for camper and athletes that really interact well with the campers and understand that um, the campers are there to kind of see how the, uh, the elite athletes train, but also see that they're real people and see that they can, you know, sit down for a meal and hang out and talk and chat and just be a real person and not this kind of like, oh my God, they're, they're from another planet. They're, they're not even, you know, human. And I, how am I supposed to interact with them? And when we're able to find athletes like that, like yourself, that really does interact with the camper so well, it, it, mm -hmm. you know, means a ton to us, but it also um, really kind of, makes us want to have you out again so i appreciate all the effort that you put into making the campers have a great time oh of course it was it was absolutely my pleasure i um you know i actually saw so many of them at wadapalooza oh and yeah and it was yeah. it was great and you know there are you know wadapalooza you or competitions you see people but you don't have a lot of time to interact uh it's very very quick interactions and the the relationships that i made at power monkey camp would not have happened without it like there's mm -hmm. no way that i would ever have sat mm -hmm. down and talked with a lot of these people or had the opportunity to really meet them and interact with them other than at power monkey camp so it was you know you don't gotta thank me i loved it <laughs> sweet well, we'll get yeah, you back so, out for sure yeah so many yeah. amazing people out there uh, every single time and look forward to you coming back out danny for sure now uh, a couple of things that you said uh, brought up some thoughts. One, you said 2016 is when you got into CrossFit. So kind of a two or three part question here. What got you into CrossFit? And I wonder was, I mean, because you seem to be, be a very well-rounded athlete. I mean, you just won the Titan Games and, you know, seeing you move at Power Monkey Camp and everything else. But was there anything in particular that you struggled with um, learning and developing coming into CrossFit? And is there anything that you struggle with uh, still to this day? Yeah, uh, the, <laughs> the long distance running, I was not kidding <laughs> with my, my capacity around like that 200 meter mark. Um, it's something I have to continue to work on and I'll probably always have to work on. My body is just built for mm -hmm. the 200 meter, you know, right. yard, like dash, like I dash and then mm -hmm. I'm done. <laughs> um, so, you know, workouts where, you know, you've got 800 meter intervals or even like 400s, like in a workout like that's something that I struggle with so that's something I still uh I'm still working on and probably always will have to work on um so what got me into CrossFit is you know I had the same story as pretty much anybody as someone was like hey you should really give this a go and at first I was like nah those people seem really crazy um <laughs> and then someone sat me down and had me uh, actually watch some of the games workouts I think it was from I think it was like 2015 uh, 2014 games. I just remember watching them carry that really big log. It was like the bird and run workout where they carried that log and they came and flipped the pig and then they did something else. Um, but I remember like watching and even though it was like a running event, I was like, oh my gosh, like I should give this a go. And then the next workout that we watched was triple three with uh, the 
3k row 300 double unders three mile run and I remember going oh my god I would never I'll never do that workout I don't care how long I do CrossFit I'm not doing it and then my first individual regionals it was the first workout of regionals and I was like of course be careful what you say (laughs) right (laughs) yeah the universe is like "Ah." Mm -hmm. um but yeah so same story as I feel like Mm -hmm. a lot of people I just had someone like really pester me and be like you should really just come to a class and I did and then I, I never left the gym they had to tell me to leave yeah so. That's awesome. What in the world would you be doing today if you hadn't been in, introduced to CrossFit? What would you be doing? I'd probably be out on a boat in the middle of the ocean doing some kind of marine biology research. Really? Uh, that was the that was the goal. I was working uh, to, to go and do like lionfish research wow. over in the Indo Pacific. Um, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to live on a boat and just like dive, you know, two times a day and just live in the ocean, and be a little fish. And so, uh, that's some. That's probably what I'd be doing. <laughs> That so, sounds awesome. And actually, I can see yeah. you as a mermaid. You, you'd you be a good mermaid. <laughs> yeah, I got the hair for it, yeah. you know. <laughs> um, but I, you know, that's something that it was a big, it was a big turning point in my life. My, uh, my whole idea of what I was going to do, my whole life took a really hard left. And I remember the phone call with my parents and I was like, hey, <laughs> like, I know that, you know, since I was three years old, I wanted to like mm. do marine biology and like we have invested a lot of money into my education, but like, I really think I could be good at this CrossFit thing. My dad was like, okay, <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the next day he was calling me and being like, how fast do you think you do 10 burpee box jump overs? And I was like, okay, he sold. <laughs> well, he, he did um, his research, is a 10 burpee box jump that, That's wow. the workout that I want to see. <laughs> oh my, yes, he, he was, he would, uh, he would just like call me and be like, did you climb the rope today? Like, yeah, Dad. I, I climbed the rope today. It's the <laughs> um, athlete so, in him. That's a competitor yeah, in him, right? Both, both mom and dad. I mean, they uh, they support me in anything um, that I did. So when I was doing gymnastics, my dad went and like became a coach. He got certified, oh, wow. so he could like come into the gym with me. So they uh, they are the definition of like supportive parents. Mm, so that's amazing. Yeah, they've been they've been great. Yeah. How long into CrossFit? Um, did it take you to make that decision? Did you go in and do your first CrossFit workout and, you know, snap the, snap your fingers and change your life or what was it? It was pretty much instantaneous. I went and did, you know, my first day and fell in love and was like, well, I at least know that this is what I'm going to do in terms of like fitness. And then it took me maybe two weeks until I signed up for my first competition. It was a little local competition, like over in Melbourne, Florida, um and I went in there having been doing CrossFit for around three months and I ended up winning it was a very very low like very small local competition but just that like that you know right small competition you know the feeling you know getting on the podium I was like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna chase this for as long as I can and then I did (laughs) so uh it was a bumpy road for Mm. about a year and a half but yeah, we turned out okay. <laughs> mm, absolutely. Yeah, same thing for me with Olympic lifting. I went to my first competition and I was able to win it and there was just no turning back. It was just forward on, no looking back from there. So, you know, now yeah. you say that along with training, you're also a nutrition coach. So um, with your training, how much of that are you able to do? And I always like to hear, you know, from nutrition coaches or coaches from any specific field what are the most common hangups you see? So with the people that you work, work with, what are the one or two things that they struggle with the most? Um, so I think, you know, the number one thing that I see is people are just, they just don't know, you know, and that is like that is there's, there's so much information out there that people don't have the information. Right. And I, I truly believe like, you know, I follow macros and when I talk to people about nutrition, that's how I go about it. I get them on a macro plan and, you know, I believe in like a high protein, you know, diet. And then if like people aren't like training to be like super competitive, um, I get them on kind of like a low carb if they're trying to like lose weight and, uh, it's just funny to hear, you know, I'll, I'll just ask, like my first question always usually is, okay, like, you know, was yesterday like a normal day of eating for you? And, you know, they'll be like, yeah, and I'll be like, okay, just run me through what you ate. And a lot of times is they'll be like, oh yeah, yesterday, you know, it was normal. It was like super healthy. Um, mm-hmm. and I'll be like, okay, like, right. do you usually do like low carb, low fat? And they're like, I really try to stay away from the fats. I'm like, okay, so run me through what you did. They're like, 
okay, well, I had some eggs. I'm like, okay, well, did you cook them in anything? They're like, yeah, I threw in some butter. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, so it's just, you know, like little things like that. Uh, mm-hmm. And like salad dressing people, you know, they're like, I had a salad. And right. then I'm like, okay, well, did you have a dressing? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I had, you know, I dumped a half bottle in. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you would have been better off like going to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> so, Chick-fil-A um, is good. And those grilled chicken nuggets, man. Oh God. <laughs> um, so it's just, you know, and once people just start, you know, realizing exactly what they're putting into their body, a lot of them, it, it clicks and they're able right. to just like take off and like do it. You know, they, they stay with me for several months and then a lot of times, you know, they feel comfortable and they can just go and live their life. They've changed their lifestyle, their way of living. Right. And it's no longer about like a diet plan. It's about just like, you know, making them aware of what they're putting in their body and like changing their lifestyle. And once they, you know, get into the flow of it, they, they live great lives. They don't need me anymore. I tell them that, like, I'm just here to give you like guidelines. Um, and so I think that that's the biggest thing that I see almost with every single person I talk to, unless they've, they've, you know, had a nutritionist, you know, work with them before, or they've counted macros before. So they know how strict you have to be. I think it's just, people just have no idea what's in the food that they're eating. Mm -hmm. Um, They don't, it doesn't like click in their head that if they cook food in something, they actually like they're ingesting that as well. So like if Mm -hmm. someone cooks something in butter, a lot of times they're like, I'm not eating that. I just cooked it in it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Like, okay, (laughs) it doesn't work like that, but okay. Um, So that, yeah, that's the biggest thing, but people, people learn quick. It's great. Has your own diet changed at all uh, since starting CrossFit? Have you basically, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was also someone who just had no idea. I, I wasn't really aware. Like I would think like, oh, I didn't eat that much. Like I actually went most of the day without eating. And then I just had this at dinner, but then, you know, my dinner was something that was like outrageous. Um, and so I, even after about a year of CrossFit, um, I wasn't really changing a lot of like what I was doing. And then I had my boyfriend, uh, Alex, he actually is the first person who really, you know, got me into like counting macros and changed my nutrition. And I would about six months after I really changed my nutrition is when I did like individual, uh, regionals, got my, got my shit together, (laughs) uh, started eating better. And then I had like, you know, the year that I would say was like my, my come out year with all the, um sanctioned events and I started placing really well and CrossFit's one of those things where you can do pretty well if you are naturally talented like I came in Mm -hmm. like pretty naturally talented with a really good background but it changes a lot of things if you've got the nutrition down and you're not carrying around like even you know 10 15 extra pounds that you don't need to be like you know, gymnastics becomes a whole lot easier when you're not sure. doing it in a weight vest constantly. Sure. Um, so yeah, my, my diet has definitely changed drastically since my day one of CrossFit to like where I am now. And what do you say that it looks like right now in terms of daily basis? What's a normal, a normal day from a diet perspective for you? Um, so I still am someone who does like pretty high protein. So I, I pack in 254 grams of protein every single day. So wake up, protein shake, and my coffee, do a session, post-workout shake, uh, meal, and then small snack, and then another workout session, post-workout shake, meal, snack, workout, post-workout shake, dinner. Um, so my, my stuff is pretty, pretty high protein. I go really, really low fat, though, so I only do 33 grams of fat per day. Um, but my carbs, you know, I cycle them depending on how much training I do from a day. So I can go anywhere from like 150 to 225. So rest days, I kind of do lower carb because I don't really need them. I'm not recovering from anything. Um, but protein every single day, I pack in that protein, which is great for me. Like I love, I love eating that way. So I know a lot of, where are you getting your protein? Uh, protein shakes, yogurt, eggs. Um, I do, I do dairy products. So I, I definitely will do some like milk and things like that. Uh, biggest thing though is just meats. Like I, I eat a lot of meat, um, chicken throughout the day. And then I do 30 grams of protein per protein shake after uh, each workout. So on a three session day, you know, that's 90 grams of protein from protein shakes. And I don't know if I heard that correctly, but are you training three times a day right now? 
You doing three days? Um, yeah, not like huge sessions. I mean, I do a 90 minute morning session, two and a half hour uh, afternoon session, and then like hour and a half, like night session. Uh, that's not every single day. Like Thursdays and Saturdays are just one really long, usually like three hour session. Mm -hmm. um, so those are kind of like days where I uh, just get it all done and then recover for the rest of the day. But every other day I'm really trying to get in at least, you know, at least two, but typically three. Um, just to kind of, especially right now, because with the games, like typically right now I'm trying to amp up volume uh, and be tired all day and still be able to go in at night and hit you know, really good performance like you do at the games, you know, you might start at, you know, 9 a.m., but that last event might be 7 p.m., so you got to mm -hmm. be ready all day. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a crazy schedule. I'm thinking, like, for longevity purposes, three days, you know, training six hours a day, that's, that's basically, you know, the amount of time that uh, professional athletes put in uh, for, for their own training. <clears throat> I'm just curious about because of how intense CrossFit is, how sustainable that is over a long term. Do you think you could do that for another five, 10 years, that same type of uh, output? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I am, um, you know, it, cha it like changes. It comes in waves. Like I, uh, I know other athletes like back in the old schedule with the games um, would take, you know, three months off. Um, they would like go and do class wads and they would just, you know, they recover. So it's like that, that intensity and that volume doesn't happen year round. And it doesn't happen for me year round either. Um, there will definitely be times when I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm tired. And I know a lot of athletes don't feel this way, but for me, I will, if I feel like I'm having like a really tough time mentally or you know, physically in the gym, like I don't have a problem taking a random rest day or even like taking like a down week, even, mm. you know, right now with the game so close, I'm someone who I, I wouldn't freak out if I was like feeling kind of, you know, low. And I would just be like, I think I need just a couple days. I'll take them. Yeah, <laughs> uh, cause that's great. I, that's great. I do. I want to do this for a really long time. And I feel like um if I push through a lot of those things, not only physically, but I think mentally you get that burnout. So I try to listen to my, my body and my mind as much as I can. Um, so, yeah, yeah that, that I, sounds like a really high uh, training IQ there. Actually, mm -hmm. Chad, it reminds me a little bit of a conversation we were having with, uh, with Aaron, um, yeah. about like, you know, missing a training session and a lot of athletes freaking out about how that's right. going to affect their training the next day or the next week or that particular cycle. But understanding that listening to your body and having the ability to say, okay, my body really needs a rest day today. Like that's what it's telling me. And how beneficial that can be in the long run and longevity and actually seeing the growth. Uh, and I think you don't get that early on in your career. You get that over mm -hmm. either ha someone that has a really good training IQ, someone that is kind of smart when it comes to training, or a seasoned athlete that says, 10 years ago, I wish I would have known this about my mm -hmm. training. Yeah. And I had to go through all these injuries and all these breakdowns and all these you know, physical and mental breakdowns to realize that rest days in a lot of cases are as important as the actual days you're in the gym training. Yeah, yep. I am. Um, spent... Yeah, go ahead, Dad. I was just going to say, I spent too many years banging my head against the wall. That's for sure. I mean, overall, I think I, I did pretty well and, and ended up being fairly smart. But yeah, there's a big difference in, you know, people that are always looking for excuse and making excuses to short their, to cut their workout short or to not work out at all. And on the other end of that is just people that are unwilling to waver from what's written down whatsoever just because it's on down on paper they've got to get it in no matter what they're going to force it and you know nothing else in the world matters so you know to be able to be smart we you know you always hear that be smart with your training be smarter work smarter not harder it's hard to really know what that is until you have some years of training in you yeah and i think the whole work uh, you know smarter not harder thing is you know, it's different for everybody. Yep. And I think there are some athletes who, you know, you see it outside of the gym as well. Someone who can eat exactly the same thing every single day, hit mm -hmm. their macros with the same exact foods every single yeah. day, almost to like, you know, not in a bad way, but a neurotic way. And it's not a bad thing because those people are usually very, very lean, very, very fit. And, you know, that works for them. And, it, you know, it will work for them for years. And then there are people who honestly, they're athletes like me, who I'm just like, 
I don't want to follow my macros today. And you know what? I, uh, I did a really hard, you know, week it's, it's Friday. So I'm just going to do my morning session and call it a day. And it doesn't freak me out. And I think it's just like one of those things where I just have to realize that that's the kind of athlete I am. And I think if you can just be honest with yourself about like what's best for you, that's how you can, you know, train smarter, not harder. Um, so you just have to be honest with like who you are. And if you are trying to be someone that you're not in the gym, uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, you can't achieve the same things. But if you're just trying to like train like somebody else and like you mentally burn out, you know, but you push through for like a week, but now you have a month where you're like, oh, I just like don't even want to go to the gym because you push so hard that week. Then, you know, it's just, it's a bigger like issue than if you would have just maybe like taken a couple of rest days in that first week. Mm -hmm. So, so how does that pertain to uh, what you're say this upcoming year, have you planned out what your training schedule is going to look like and what competition, what sanctionals you actually want to be a part of over the next year uh, past the games? Or is it basically, let me get through the games and then we'll plan on what's happening from 2021 on after that. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm waiting to hear, you know, what sanctioned events are doing. Yeah. Um, I know that Dubai, you know, is, so, is like a competition that after my first time going, I said to myself, I will do this every single year because it's a great event. It's so much fun. Um, but they already canceled. And so that's the December one. And that's usually mm -hmm. like the kickstart of sanctioned events. And so that's already kind of, you know, out the window. Um, and I haven't heard about, I know one in Ireland usually happens, but I haven't heard an update on whether they're going to do their competition that's usually in November. So right now it's really kind of like I have nothing to plan for except for the open, which obviously will happen because everyone can just do it in their own gym. Uh, we're proving that the games are going to happen with that way uh, as long as gyms open up everywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen when um, February rolls around and if somewhere, you know, like California, I know gyms start like still aren't open I don't know like what really will happen at that point um but the only planning I can do right now is to plan for the open I know that Loud and Live has you know said a couple of their events are definitely gonna still happen they're gonna make them happen but you know you, you have to kind of take that with a grain of salt uh because everyone was saying like we are gonna have the games like they are gonna happen we're gonna have everybody out to California and then California was like no you're not mm -hmm. <laughs> you're really actually not and so they don't they can't we can't do it there um so just kind of like waiting to hear on everything uh, and just see like what events are actually gonna happen what events can happen and then I'll I'll make a plan from mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense so um we're winding up to our hour here uh and we always like to end our sessions with a few questions if you wouldn't mind hanging out with us for a few more minutes if that's cool with you yeah of course <laughs> all right so the first one's easy and chad i always like to i always like to like guess what the uh the guest is going to say on this one but i don't know yeah. this one yeah i'm, I'm, I'm not sure in the air. yeah um chad and i have a running tally on this one so you're going to give a check mark to one of us Okay. But what sport or discipline do you prefer, weightlifting or gymnastics? I got gymnastics. I know. Yay! <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Everyone, everyone, I, I, I always shock people with that because everyone was just like, because I am such a strong athlete, everyone mm -hmm. just thinks um, that I would have like more of an inclination for uh, like the weightlifting side. And don't get me wrong, in competition, I'm always excited for like a heavy barbell workout. Um, and like, you know, a workout with, you know, high volume ring muscle ups, I don't get as excited for it in competition because I know that it's not going to be one of my better ones, but like in training, I love handstand walks and handstand push ups, And I love getting on the rig and doing the ring muscle ups because it's just fun to swing around. Um, but in competition, I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah, we should just one rep max every single event. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like let's just do that. <laughs> um, and throw some handstand push-ups in there because I'm also like I'm decent at handstand push-ups. Um, but yeah, I do. I just I I grew up doing gymnastics, so I I have the yeah. I still get the you know the dreams where I'm like doing the my floor routine oh, yeah. or a vault, and I like wake yeah. up and I'm like oh dang it. You, <laughs> so so yeah. the the common gymnast I don't know what happens with weightlifting, but the common gymnast uh, dreaming about gymnastics is you wake up and you you'll reach for something. Like I used to <laughs> yes. find myself like grabbing for a bar or like bar, realizing yes. that I'm landing oh, yeah. 
And there would be some really aggressive ones, like falling out of chairs sometimes, oh, like geez. waking up and like the bar's not there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah people that... have the dreams where they like fall off a cliff and like I'm falling off the bar. Yeah, like, yeah, the yeah, beam, oh, yeah. The beam or something. I'm oh, like, yeah. ah. <laughs> yeah. Anything like that happen with you, Chad? Any uh, thing, I mean, uh, what, what I dream about while you're sleeping? <laughs> no, I think maybe I've jerked a couple times, but uh, what I dream about more is either high school football and actually being successful and having fun. And then two, the nightmare, the weightlifting nightmare is when I'm just sitting there over and over and over again, trying to snatch the empty bar and I can't do it. Like I forgot how to snatch. I can't get the empty bar over my head. I'm trying to figure it out desperately. And it is the worst nightmare I've ever had in my life. And it's that's recurring. my reality. That's not a dream for me. That's, that's me picking up I've, the barbell and actually not being able to snatch. <laughs> I feel so bad for you. I feel so bad for you. I feel so bad for you. <laughs> Mine is a split jerk. For some reason, the split jerk. I'm just like, I'm gonna forget how to do this, and I'm yeah. gonna land on my like wrong on my ankle, and the split jerk still terrifies me. Well, let me <laughs> so. let me tell you, Danny, you have the the strength and the body type probably to just be a power jerker. To be honest with you, I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah, I only split jerk when absolutely in a desperate situation. Probably, <laughs> I is, avoid probably those is, yeah. at all costs. Yeah, I, I would say you're probably capable of jerking more with, I mean, and so maybe you can already do that, but I'm just saying potential wise, most people are going to have more potential with the split jerk. Whereas I think you would have more potential with the power jerk. Yeah. My, um, my power jerk and split jerk PRs are exactly the same because yeah. I just refuse to max out the split jerk. <laughs> yeah. so. Chad, are you yeah. seeing that more often these days though with a lot of the top lifters are doing a lot more uh, power jerk over switch. Um, I wouldn't say it's like extreme, but maybe a, a slight amount more are going with the power jerk. But, you know, what I do in coaching and teaching people is very regularly, I'll take the split jerk away from athletes, um, at least temporarily, because the split jerk causes them to think too much. It's, it's a confusing movement. I feel like people struggle with the split jerk more than they do snatches and cleans for sure. Hmm. Um, just because there's a lot going on in, in the dip and drive and the split position is just confusing to them. So, yeah. That doesn't surprise me. You see that with just like regular, like CrossFit members, like they can do jerks all day, but then as soon as you try to get them to split jerk, you're like, yeah. <laughs> what oh, was yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's like a dancing again. move, you know, it's, yeah. there's a lot going on there. You got to be proficient. Yeah. Um, all right. Question number two. Uh, is there yeah. anybody that sticks out in your mind that you think would be a great guest for us to have on the podcast? Ooh. Oh, you know what? So many people actually, I think one, um, one person is like, have you, do you guys know who Kelsey Keel is? I don't. Mm -hmm. Oh man. <laughs> um, she, she is a wonderful, wonderful human. She was on team Invictus Boston um she's got she's got a lot of stories she's like me she's you know a, a bigger like legged girl who's you know making it in the crossfit world um she's also just got a heart of gold so she's always a fun person to talk to um i would say if you haven't talked to either like some of my born primitive athletes like amanda barnhart or bethany shabern uh -huh. i think that they're they're pretty they're pretty yeah. fun people um Sweet. and on a different a different if you want someone who's like definitely different than me amanda is one of those people that will like she's very very strict uh mm -hmm. with her training and her macros it's just she's like she's opposite um not opposite but different from me in terms of like that so it'd be a cool contrast um and then if you haven't talked to chandler smith or jacob hepner you got to get them on because <laughs> you'll just you'll have a good old time with them so i would definitely say like try to try to you know, get them on the show. <laughs> Sweet. Well, that's a nice little list for us. I was hoping you would throw mm -hmm. the rock in there, but, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, we actually, so funny story with him. He, uh, he actually tried to call me, um, when like the whole Titan games like finale happened and I actually had his number blocked because <laughs> around the time of the beginning, <laughs> of the titan games i guess he tried to call to just be like hey like you know like congrats like uh, you know it's airing tonight yay but around that time i had this person who kept getting like burner phones and would call me and say really really gross things like on the phone and so it would always start the same way i'd say hello and they'd be like is this danny i'd be like yeah who's asking 
and then they would like breathe really heavily and then start saying really nasty stuff. Oh my God. So I would have, I had to block like 20 numbers and it turned out that the night that this aired, like I got like a call and I was like, mm. hello. And like nothing happened. And I just heard breathing in the back. It's like, oh, not again. So I like blocked the rock. <laughs> And for like a nice. month, he was like apparently calling and texting me. And finally, his producers <laughs> like called me and they're like, hey, he's been trying to get in touch with you for like a month. He's like left you voicemails. He's just not sure wow. why, you know, you're not returning any of his calls. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, oh my wow. God. Uh, yeah. So he finally like reached out on Instagram and was like, hey, like, you know, I'd call you, but you'd probably just hang up on me again. <laughs> and then I was like, oh my nice. God, no. So then I tried to like make a joke out of it and be like, oh, you know, like this, you know, sorry, like, oh, and then he just never responded. So I don't know if I could like mm. even get you guys to like, contact you. <laughs> he hates right, right. me. <laughs> so yeah, well, good luck with that. Hopefully that's not the case, but my goodness, uh, that's a crazy situation to be uh, having to navigate yeah. there. So I, I can't, I already don't pick up any phone that I don't, any number I don't right. recognize, but right. I can't imagine the kind of calls you get like that. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I just, I usually don't. And then it's like, of course, like I, I don't. And then all of a sudden I'm getting in trouble because they're like, you yeah. know, we've been trying to contact you. I'm like, oh, The Rock no. is trying to contact you. The Rock, wow. Well, hopefully you can re reconnect with The Rock one of these days. But uh, getting into our last question here, it's kind of a two-parter. First part okay. of it is, what do you prefer? Books, movies, documentaries, TV series, or podcast? What? <laughs> that... <laughs> That's so many. Um, I I love reading. I I always have a book um, like going on. So I definitely I definitely love reading. I'm actually reading The Art of Resilience right now um, by uh, I actually forgot his name. I have the book, but I'll like send it to you guys um, by Ross Edgley. There he goes. Um, so I'm reading that right now. Super great, by the way. He's the guy that swam around. Britain, mm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. the entire thing. <laughs> um, so that that's what I'm reading right now. But after that, then I think I love listening to podcasts. But then after that, I'm big on like TV shows. Uh, right now, I'm watching like the Eco Challenge. I don't know if you guys mm -hmm. ever heard of that. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So I'm big into those kind of things. Um, so that would be probably my order. And then I go to movies um last but it has to be like movies that like a like a series like i just got yeah. done uh watching like the marvel series uh in order all over again wait you watch all like of the marvel movies in order like yeah not in a day of them? <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah wow the, yeah it's great and so i love things like that where you can have like a month-long adventure where it's like yeah. next one's tonight um gotcha. so i love to do that yeah sorry that was that was a yeah. tough question well you handled it beautifully <laughs> now it makes me wonder is there an eco challenge in your future i would love to do that but you need four you people yeah you need you need like a team of four and you know if you watch this stuff like you hear like these twins that were like yeah we're the first twins to climb everest and then there's like mm. these other people who have like you know, done these, like, these crazy adventures. And I'm over here like, oh, I can snatch. <laughs> right, <laughs> so right. It's like, I would need a team that is, you know, very, very, very apt. And I can just yeah. be like the, the muscle. Right. Like, I'll, I'll paddle really hard and I can <laughs> climb stuff really well. But like, if we got stranded, I'd be like, mm. you have <laughs> like, to lean on somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So if I could find three other people who are really about it, a hundred percent. I would do it now. I would just go out and like spend 11 days yeah. just doing it now. So, you know, if anybody, you know, out there who's really woodsy wants <laughs> to, you know, <laughs> do it, reach out. I think, hey, I think you, you might, you get your, yeah. your, uh, your games team together. You know, you get yeah. your, your Alec, your Cody, you guys all get together to compete in one of those. I think you guys would pretty kick, kick some ass. Oh, they, they would take them because <laughs> it, it would be interesting to see how, a CrossFit team did out there, right? Right, it would be right. Very that, would, that would be a good pitch right there. I you think it would be, something. you know, I think it would be really good. Like we would do really, really well until, you know, day three hit and we're like surviving off of three hours of sleep and like we haven't gotten Chipotle. And <laughs> right, like, right. I think all of us together, like we're, we're really good, but I think all four of us would be pretty useless you know like day three comes around no sleep no food we'd be like what is this like well, no i don't want to go good tv 
<laughs> yeah, it would make for oh, great yeah. TV. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> So I can, and that can be like the trial run. I'll like, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll do that. And then I'll get like a real team together. That might <laughs> there have you a go. chance there of you finishing. Go. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. Actually my, my daughter and I have started watching those. We've watched, I think two or three episodes so far. I love it. Love watching those. It's awesome. Um, now you pretty much answered the second part of the question kind of already, but oh, I'll good. go ahead and say <laughs> you, you mentioned you like podcast. What podcast do you recommend to our listeners? Um, I am big on like the crime stuff. So I love hearing about, uh, like all like the murder mysteries. Um, I just got done listening to Dr. Death. Have you heard that I've, one? I have heard about it. I haven't listened to any of it yet, but I've heard it about is it. wild. I don't want to like give away too much in case, you know, you or some listeners go and watch, uh, or li- watch, listen to it. But it's really about like a, a doctor that like with the mortality rate, like very, very high. and was just going around and like, like, I had no idea what he was doing, essentially. Right. And it's just, the stories are crazy. So I love, I like, as gross and morbid as they are, I love listening to those. And then my other, um, like, big one that I do that's, like, outside, like, I'm talking about outside of the fitness stuff. Like, I right. obviously listen to a lot of, like, the fitness podcasts, but outside of the fitness world, um, there's On Being, and they bring in all sorts of, like, different people, and they talk about all different like it's such a wide spectrum of stuff that can be about you know the plastic problem in the oceans to how people are raising their children to you know learning how education uh is different for like so many people and how like this one girl like she just she needed to dance to be able to learn and people thought she just mm-hmm. had ADHD but really her brain just like worked in a way that she did better and she learned more when she was like in movement and you know, the, the topics are all over the place, but yeah. it's, it's always amazing and beautiful stories. So I love, I love that podcast. It's called On Being. Um, On Being. So. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. And I thought you were going to say the Power Monkey podcast was your favorite, but we'll, we'll, we'll take those other ones. That's okay. No. <laughs> I was staying away from the fitness. No, so no, away from no. The fitness podcast. <laughs> no, I, I like hearing things about outside of fitness. I mean, we're all very deep into, into this community. So it's, it's uh, cool to hear some recommendations outside of that. And Danny, man, it was a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much for joining us. Loved learning more about you. And, you know, hopefully we'll be able to see you at camp at some point again in the future. Do you have any parting words for our listeners? Uh, just any, everybody out there, just like, you know, stay, stay strong during these times, like stay positive, stay motivated, um, you know, stay smiling. Like that's the biggest thing is just try to stay, you know, happy each day. I know, you know, times are tough right now, uh, but everyone you know thank you for the love and support that you guys give me and thank you chad and dave for having me on the podcast it's always nice to see some friendly faces uh when you can't travel as much so hopefully i can get out there again soon um hopefully you know fingers crossed things start returning to normal right uh, pretty soon here yeah dave congrats again on your second little your second little tumble thank talk you. Thank she you. is beautiful thank you so much <laughs> yes. yep of course and yeah hope to see you guys soon absolutely absolutely uh, and Dave, any updates with Power Monkey that you can give the listeners? What's going on sure. right now? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we all st- are still running our Power Monkey camp. Um, it's going to be a much smaller camp, um, but we are doing it September 27th to October 3rd. We've been fortunate enough that the location out in Tennessee uh, ran 12 weeks of kids summer camp there all summer without any cases. And it's awesome. been, it was kind of like a, a test run for us to see if the facility was capable of of hosting and they're ho- they hosted about triple the number of people that we're going to be having there. So mm. we feel like we'll be able to pull off a very safe uh, environment for camp, very open, 150 acres, and uh, with the numbers that we're going to have, uh, the numbers in each cabin and each living situation will be very, very small. So, uh, yeah, camp is still going on. If you want more information, just go to powermonkeycamp.com. You can still register there. Uh, as long, uh, along with our app, uh, I would highly recommend checking out all the new features and new things that we have going on with our uh, Monkey Method app. You can find that on iOS and on Android. And uh, yeah, those are both kind of uh, good places for you to check out some of our upcoming stuff. Awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to being back there, Dave. I can't believe it's been a year I know. since we've been there. You know, not, know. not being able to go the, our usual two times per year is is very sad and we're all going to be excited to be back for sure. But guys, on top of what Dave mentioned, also check out our Instagram pages for regular teaching and technical content at power monkey fitness at Dave Durante and at Ollie Chad. And on behalf of power monkey fitness, we're your host, 
I'm Chad Vaughn with Dave Durante. Until, and until next time, guys, thank you all for listening. 